This is John Young at the Weekend Handyman. Today we're going to be replacing a blind here in one of my boys' bedroom. Now this particular shade was purchased in about 2007, somewhere 2007-2008. This was purchased from the Select Blind Company. And what I liked about this is that it was a honeycomb, it was a room darkening, and it had two sets, if you guys can see that. It had an inner and an outer layer of the honeycomb. And what it allowed us to do is to really blacken up the rooms, or blacken out the light from the rooms. So that in this particular room there's three of these windows which are about 43 by I think 54 something like that but that allowed us to basically have it so it was like nighttime during the day and we liked the shades we wanted to get a top down bottom up which means that it can come down a little bit to give you some light especially on the summer days when you have the Sun coming in that we can have it just down a little bit to get the light in and our overhang on the house would basically block the Sun or in the winter time we could bring it up from the bottom and have it so every Everything basically would come together at the top and you were you were getting you know only about four inches at the top that was covered well this particular shade from from select select lines was a pretty expensive shade at the time and it was one that was one of their lifetime warranty shades well we had some issues with these shades actually over the course of, of the last probably two to three years every one of them has failed the little strings at the top there's supposed to be a pull on one side that allows you to bring you know change it's it, from the top down the other one's the bottom whatever and those wires or strings have broken so over a period of time we've been replacing all of them we're going to be replacing it today i'm not going to go back to select blinds because their lifetime warranty on this only lasts until this this series was uh, discontinued so here we are um, about 10 years later so these some of these started to fail at about year six 10 years later we can't get anything on our lifetimes over obviously so we're going to be uh, using just an inexpensive one that we picked up from one of our local big box stores this is window images it's a top-down bottom-up from Menards we picked this up and it's one that they will cut at the store so in this particular case I had it cut it was cut at about 40 inches it, they, they marked it here at 40 and a half because that's what the rough opening is on the outside the uh, window on the inside here and then uh, the biggest negative is that the this the ones from Select Blind were a a custom length. This you can only get in a close length, so it should be 54, and I believe this is a 72 inch height. So we're going to see at the end of our video how that's going to work out and if it's going to cause a problem before we go and purchase the rest of the blinds to replace the blinds in this room. So let's get started. Now with this the particular Select Blind we used, it had three different mounting brackets at the top and what they were is that the mounting brackets had a little bit of a spring feature that held this top bar in so what we have to do is we have to push that in a little bit let's see where we're we gonna start at we have to push it in and then to tip it down let's start on this end I think this end might be a best one there we go let's push it in and we can tip it push it in and tip and now they're out. And this is probably about $150 to $200 of garbage right here. So we're going to get rid of that. Now we have different brackets that are going to be used at the top of this, so I need to get my tools out and remove those brackets. In this particular case, it is just a Phillips screwdriver. So we'll grab, actually, this one, we're going to grab a cordless drill to make it a little bit quicker to run these out. And of course we're going to drop them. Now to hold the, this one is didn't come down because we actually taped it up there when we were installing it, which happened again about 10 years ago. And finally our last bracket. Now this is an oak extension jam that we put on this window. So it means that it's gonna be a little bit tough to run the next round of screws in unless we either have a pilot hole or we're gonna be able to line up on the existing holes. So we'll have to take a look at that and see exactly what we can do as we open up our new shade. Now when you purchase these at, really many of the big box stores can do this, but when you purchase these, what they do is they end up nipping a little off on both ends. They have their big guillotine type machine that will allow you to get these adjusted to the size 
and if your rough opening in this case is about 40 and a half, what they will do is they'll take off a quarter inch, so that way you put the ends on and it's going to be a nice snug fit on your window. But the ends aren't on, we're going to dig those out of the box and slot those on. Now in the little packet of parts, we've got the little ends that will go on the bottom of the blind. We have the ends that will go up on the top of the blind. And because this is a top down bottom up, there's going to be a second set of ends that will seal off the top of the blind. So we have six little pieces of plastic. We've got our mounting brackets, which will be mounted up on the top. And we're going to see if we can put, there's three mounting brackets. We're going to see if we can get lucky and they'll line up with the old holes. So we don't have to re-drill. If they don't, we're going to fill those holes and then we will redo those holes. Then you've got these little plastic clips, and these will clip on to the, the blind itself on the plastic ends, the rails, and allow you to move it up and down. One, two, three, four. Now that we have the old brackets down, we can take our shade and see exactly how it will line up where, with the spots where the old brackets were. We want to look and see if where the new brackets would be if they mounted in the same holes, if they would be lining up with anything. So that one looks good, that one looks good, that one looks good. We don't have any of our mechanisms in the way, so we're gonna give it a try to see if we can use the same holes with our brackets. Now the brackets are kind of an L-shaped bracket with a clip on the bottom and a little hook on the top. And what we're going to do is see if they will line up. And it looks like they're gonna line up perfectly, yay! If it wouldn't line up, you'd end up having to do a little bit of drilling of a pilot hole or two. But in this case, they seem to line up very well. Now, if you were going to need to do a pilot hole, this is the, this is the size screw that we're using. You'd want to go and you want to find a, a drill bit that is about half the diameter approximately. Now, this is kind of an oak in oak jam. We'd probably be looking somewhere between the 332nd and the 564th. I'd probably go with the 332nd because that one's just going to be a little bit easier in this hardwood. A softer wood, I'd probably, I could go with a, a little bit smaller one, but somewhere in that ballpark. And now we can get these brackets mounted. Now with these brackets, we don't have to really drill or, or drive these screws all the way in until they're like sucked into the wood. You basically just want them so they're, they're in and they're snug and secure so they're not going to wiggle, which means in this case, they get to the point where they're touching touching the metal and the, the wood and everything is nice and tight. And then we are good to go. If you start trying to push too hard on them, you're going to end up destroying, destroying the bends and shape of that bracket, which means that that bracket won't work for you the way you need it to work for you. Now, if we wouldn't be retrofitting this window, if we'd be doing it for the first time, I'd probably move these shades out about another half inch, just so in the winter months when there's condensation and things that the shade wouldn't be getting into those types of things. Now we've got the brackets all mounted. We'll take our shade and make sure we have the front to the front. And really, it becomes a really simple process of snapping it in, tipping that down, and catching that across the board. Now, as you can see, this isn't a blackout, which is kind of disappointing because, you know, we'd like to have a blackout, but finding those, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out that well. We have our our little plastic brackets that we can put in a variety of different spots. I'm going to, in this particular configuration, I'm only going to put one in here, and they just snap on. This is in my teenage son's room, and for him, one will be completely fine. If I had the, in a smaller kid's room, I maybe would put two on, but with one hand, we can easily maneuver and can control the blind. We had a few things to do here to get it ready, all finished up, you know, trim the tags off because these cords can be a choking or risk, a hanging hazard. So if you have little kids, I would highly recommend that you never pull this down, you know, somewhere that they can grab onto it. Keeping that top shade up, maybe if you're gonna open this for air vented, you know, that kind of a thing. But 
But beyond that, it's good to go. Fairly easy installation. This is the Window Images top-down, bottom-up shade here that you can pick up at probably many of your big box retailers. I picked this one up at Menards. This is John Young with The Weekend Handyman.